What's up, CUS Youth? Welcome to another edition of Bible Stories with Ben. Today, we are tackling another story from Genesis, one of my favorites, Noah's Ark. If you love animals, you will love this story. Um, if you saw the movie, uh, it's not completely accurate. So let's go to, the, to uh, Genesis chapter 6, verse 9 through 14. That's where we're going to be starting today. This is the account of Noah and his family. Noah was a righteous man, the only blameless person living on earth at the time, and he walked in close fellowship with God. So since this last story we read, since Cain and Abel, um, everybody has had like more descendants. This is like, this is a couple generations later. And uh, basically everybody's been super messed up. I don't know what y'all were thinking. Maybe Cain started it with that murder, but everybody just started going a little bit bonkers. Um, there's a whole bunch of like murder, evil, child sacrifice stuff. They're worshiping other gods. They're just doing all kinds of crazy stuff. And God at this point is like, what the heck did I just do? Like I just created these people a few hundred years ago and now they're just going crazy at each other. They're gonna kill each other if I don't do something. Um, but then there's Noah and his family, the only uh, righteous man of the time. So Noah was the father of three sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. You know, um, a lot of people get named after Bible characters these days. I haven't met a Shem or a Ham or a Japheth yet. Maybe I'll, maybe I'll start that. Maybe my kids will be named that. I don't know. Now God saw that the earth had become corrupt and was filled with violence. God observed all the corruption in the world for everyone on earth was corrupt. So God said to Noah, I have decided to destroy all living creatures for they have filled the earth with violence. Yeah, I'm going to wipe them all out along with the earth. So build a large boat from cypress wood and waterproof it with tar inside and out. Then construct decks and stalls throughout its interior. And then it gives them some other measurements for this giant boat. This is just how bad the world had got. God's like, you know what? Uh, I'm gonna hit the reset button, the ultimate reset button. He's gonna bring a giant flood onto the earth. Um, and he's gonna use Noah to basically be the new Adam to just restart. Maybe your descendants are gonna do better. So then we go to Genesis chapter seven, verse one through five. When everything was ready, the Lord said to Noah, go into the boat with all your family. For among all the people of the earth, I can see that you alone are righteous. Take with you seven pairs, male and female, of each animal I have approved for eating and for sacrifice, and take one pair of each of the others. So enough food for everybody, and then um, enough, like one pair for all the animals that won't be food. Also take seven pairs of every kind of bird. There must be a male and a female in each pair to ensure that all life will survive on the earth after the flood. Seven days from now, I will make the rains pour down on the earth, and it will pour rain for 40 days and 40 nights until I've wiped from the earth all the living things I have created. So Noah did everything the Lord commanded him. He starts building this boat. I'm sure it took a really long time to build. He's just him and his family. And this is a giant operation. Can you imagine how ridiculous he must have looked? The super old man, all the other people in town, just seeing him start to build a boat just on land probably miles and miles away from the water. They're probably just laughing at him like, dude, why are you building a boat right now, dude? Like, what are you doing? <laughs> we should kill this guy because we're all evil. So then the flood comes and kills everyone. And to be fair, they probably would have killed each other anyway. They were evil and messed up. They were they were all like killing and being violent anyhow. So, they're, so they all get wiped out by the flood. And then we pick up in chapter eight, verse 14 through 19. Two more months went by and at last the earth was dry. Then God said to Noah, leave the boat, all of you, you and your wife and your sons and their wives. Release all the animals, the birds, the livestock, and the small animals that scurry along the ground so they can be fruitful and multiply throughout the earth. So Noah, his wife, and his sons and their wives left the boat, and all the large and small animals and birds came out of the boat pair by pair. Then Noah built an altar to the Lord, and there he sacrificed as burnt offerings the animals and birds that had been approved for that purpose. Imagine being one of those animals who was like rescued from this giant flood, and now you're being sacrificed. <laughs> Sucks for those guys. And the Lord was pleased with the aroma of the sacrifice and said to himself, I will never again curse the ground because of the human race, even though everything they think or imagine is, being, is bent toward evil from childhood. I will never again destroy all living things. As long as the earth remains, there will be planting and harvest, cold and heat, summer and winter, day and night. 
The next thing I want to read is Genesis chapter 9, 11 through 17. And God says, yes, I am confirming my covenant with you. Never again will flood waters kill all living creatures. Never again will flood destroy the earth. Then God said, I am giving you a sign of my covenant with you and with all living creatures for all generations to come. I have placed my rainbow in the clouds. It is a sign of my covenant with you and with all the earth. When I send clouds over the earth, the rainbow will appear in the clouds and I will remember my covenant with you and with all living creatures. Never again will the floodwaters destroy all life. So rainbows are actually, um, according to the story, rainbows are a sign of God's covenant with Noah. Pretty cool, right? Rainbows were already dope and pretty. Now we know that they have a reason. So that was the story of Noah's Ark. Um, Hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, Tune in next week for the next edition of Bible Stories with Ben.